I have a set of animating masks that can be utilized as garbage mats or for different kinds of effects. And I'm just going to give you an overview of the kinds of things you can do. I have this one set up to animate on a green screen as a garbage mat. If you need more garbage collection, you need to get rid of more garbage on the screen. You can just add multiple masks and set the invert mask checkbox on. Other features include roundness for the linear B spline. Let me go to the one that's actually turned on B spline. They're pretty simple. I mean, they're the basic four point mask. And I have to say, another thing you have to watch out for using these masks is if you try to create a straight line like this. You'll notice that it does a 3D flip. So you'll have to watch out for that. Since they're animatable and combinable, they can be grouped together to create, you know, different kinds of things. All right, this is the single one. I'm going to uh, duplicate this clip real quick and take these off. I also have a two mask set. It's two four point masks combined, and the difference here is along with the on-screen controls you also have guides to help you keep track of which ones are doing what. All these points are animatable. The easiest thing to do is move to the beginning of the clip, come out here to this drop-down, add a keyframe, and it'll just start the initial keyframe for the entire effect. And then as you advance and move control points, Final Cut will automatically add keyframes at those points in the timeline. And I'm not going to go into an explanation of the mode. But you can combine different modes among the masks on the screen to create different cutouts and I'll just leave that up for you to discover because it's really difficult to explain. The easiest thing to do usually is to just deal with the invert mask and also I have to state that let me reset this. These masks are numbered and layered. This is number one and number two. This one is below this one. And if we go to the four mass set, which gives you 16 control points, then this goes in clockwise fashion. This is number one, number two, number three, and number four. And so you can see how this gets really complicated really fast. When you, get, when you finalize this, if I turn on the key here, when you finalize this, you're going to want to uncheck show guides. And I, that would be in this set. And then when you play this, you won't see the guides, but you'll have your masks in place. All of the masks handle roundness, feather, and fall off. And they all have individual types of either linear or B spline. This is a lot of data to deal with in the four group. Sometimes it's easier just to layer on the single mask and deal with the cutouts that way. Keyframing all of this is pretty straightforward and simple. It's just that you got to remember that if you're going forward and you have a point that doesn't move 
while you're moving other points, try to remember to keyframe that too. Otherwise, it continues to move from the last keyframe to the next keyframe you set. And sometimes that's not the effect you want to have happen. Anyway, I hope you find this useful. Please consider making a contribution. You can go to my site. The link will be in the description below. Thank you very much. I will catch you on the next one.